Now to a health alert for student athletes, coaches, and parents. Last Tuesday, a 16-year-old boy collapsed and died in Mississippi during morning football conditioning drills. On the same day in Kentucky, the same thing happened to a teenage boy during afternoon soccer drills. He also died. Their autopsy results have not come back. So we do not know what caused their deaths, but they are a reminder of the dangers of our teens and the dangers they face working out in the heat. And also what you may not realize is that student athletes could be at an increased risk of serious illness because of the pandemic, believe it or not. Bob Sefcik is the director of the Jacksonville Sports Medicine Program. He's joining us this morning via Zoom. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Jen, and a virtual hug to you. <laughs> it's been a while, I know. <laughs> so how does the pandemic, Bob, impact teens who are now getting back to practice after really a long break? Well, you know, one of, one of the first things that jumps out is, you know, a sedentary lifestyle, the, 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 the decline in fitness that they're going to have because they're not used to being out on the, that sports field all the time. Um, you know, when we're in regular school and regular sports, we're, we're constantly out there running around and, and doing organized things. And now with the pandemic, we've been shut down for quite a while. And, and maybe they're also not recognizing because it is so hot out and they've been really in AC now for the last couple of months that they get dehydrated. Yeah, you know, that's uh, another great piece that you bring in there, you know, they're, they're, we're used to being in the air conditioned environment. We're probably not intaking as much hydration as what we would normally do when we're, uh, you know, participating outside. Uh, even things from, you know, medical conditions that they might have and uh, medications and supplements that they're using, uh, all those things aren't physiologically working, you know, uh, as they normally would in their bodies and, and could put them at some predisposed risk. And you mentioned definitely the heat. The heat is uh, one of the biggest factors we've been battling for some time now. And you know that we do have some new uh, provisions in place for that that we're going to talk about at, at a later time. It's interesting, too. Then are you suggesting then that these student athletes, because I know that Duval County, you know, and other counties are, are really starting back up with conditioning now this summer. And given the heat, I, I mean, should the kids somehow do something to acclimate, you know, themselves before they just run out and start, you know, exercising outside for hours on end? Well, I, th I think we are seeing that. We have a really uh, good plan uh, you know, Tammy Talley, our district athletic director for Duval Schools, has put together a great plan. It, it's a phased approach, much like ev everything else, you know, going on in our in our state, uh, where the kids, uh, the first two weeks are going to be in somewhat of a pre-acclimatization process. And then as the, the intensity of their exercises uh, begins to build, they'll be able to add time to their practice sessions and, and things like that. So this, these first two weeks, I think they're limited to about a one hour uh, workout session. So that that's just getting them back introduced to, you know, their activity and, 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 you know, really ingesting that extra fluid and being able to retain that and uh, being able to get back with the group, if you will. So it's interesting, as anxious I think all parents are of just their kids getting out of the house and their teens out of the house and doing some physical activity, you know, after like three months of, of, of basically, you know, being told to stay home. There are, though, important questions, do you agree, that parents need to be asking of their, of their coaches uh, and really of their athletes, uh, one, you know, about what do they have at the facility, for example, at the school, should their child get into trouble? And then also the questions parents should be asking of their pediatricians. Let's start first with questions that, that parents should be asking before they send the kids off to conditioning. Yeah, so, so uh, again, always important, no matter if it's a pandemic or not, you know, emergency action plans. You know, are, are the coaches prepared? Are they CPR certified? Are they ready to respond in the event of an emergency or a, a uh, an injury situation, if you will. Uh, what are their steps? Uh, is that AED present? And is there a plan in place for you know, swift action, you know, should something occur? Uh, again, I think we've you know, prepared our, our Duval schools uh, great with that. Uh, we've advanced forward with having uh, athletic trainers uh, providing some leadership to each and every uh, one of our high schools out there. So I think we're pretty well prepared with that, and along with the, the plan that Tammy Talley has in place. You know, as far as the pediatricians go, one this is one of the biggest areas that we had some question marks with, access to health care. Um, we know that that pre-participation physical exam is the first step of injury prevention. Would, will the kids have access to those uh, primary care 
family health care providers, pediatricians, in order to get those pre-participation physicals. And actually, we found that everything seems to be going much smoother than what our anxieties initially told us. So our kids are, are being able to get in. Our, our health care providers are, are teaming up and coming together and making sure that the kids do get those pre-participation physicals, making sure that they are updated. Um, it, it's important that uh, the kids and the parents also know, as well as the school and the coaches, that um, our state law now requires before any activity. So whether it's uh, a voluntary conditioning program uh, or a weightlifting program, all of their paperwork needs to be in place like their physicals. We want to make sure that that is done ahead of time. We're not waiting for school to begin. We're not waiting for the team to be selected. All of that needs to be in place ahead of time. Yeah, and those appointments, need you need to start making them now. I know it took me about a month to get in to see my pediatrician and set up that appointment. Bob Sefcek is the director of Jacksonville Sport Medicine Program. Thanks, Bob, for joining us. And, and I think that this is also a reminder to the parents who are watching that you need to make sure that you are asking your teenager questions when they come back from, you know, whatever workout that they've participated in, you know, any kind of symptoms they might have of, of some kind of condition you may not be aware of that your child has. So you can bring that to the attention of the pediatrician so something bad doesn't happen.